Are you wanting to know what is a raw food diet or barf diet and how can it actually benefit your Boston Terrier? In this video, I actually interview the author of Home Cooking for Your Dog. She walks us through all the basic questions that I have to help you guys understand how to get your Boston Terrier started on a raw food diet. Coming up. Hey everybody, welcome to the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Definitely consider subscribing if you're someone who wants to learn more about the breed, learn what it's like to be an owner, hear expert interviews like the one today, or connect with other Boston Terrier lovers just like yourself. I'm Donnie Gardner, the founder of bostonterriersociety.com. Over there is Bella, my Boston of over a decade. And today, you know, I've had a lot of people ask within the community or on the website or even the Facebook page saying, how do I start my Boston Terrier on a raw food diet? Or is a raw food diet good for Boston Terriers? And I was completely ignorant to this whole topic. I went ahead and did what most people do. I went ahead and got a book and started reading. So this book is Home Cooking for Your Dog. It's written by Christine Filardi. She basically walks you through exactly what is a raw food diet how to get your dog set up on our diet like this, as well as recipes that you can do some home cooking meals for you and your dog. I think the advice she gives is very practical, which I'm definitely a big fan of practicality because I always thought, you know, doing some sort of raw diet or home cooking just took way too long because now you're cooking not only for yourself, but for your dog. That's not Christine's method. And that's why I like it so much. If you want to check out her book, you can check it out in the show notes. But before we get started in the interview, I also have timestamps. So if you have specific questions, you can check those out and jump right to the part in the video where I discuss it. Also, as I learn more about raw food diet, I'm going to start implementing some of these things with Bella, and I want to create a template to help Boston Terrier owners like you and I start our Bostons on a raw food diet. I haven't created it yet, but it's definitely, you know, in the process, and I want to go ahead and give you the opportunity if you want to get this information once it's released. In the show notes, you can go ahead and subscribe, put your email information in there, and once I have it complete, I'll send it out to you. So without further ado, let's get into the interview. Christine, thank you so much for coming on the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Um, before we get started in talking about like raw diet and just dog nutrition in general, could you just tell me a little bit about yourself and kind of your mission, if you will? Thank you for having me on, Donald. I really appreciate it. My mission is really to educate pet owners on how to provide the best possible life for their pet. And I believe that starts with diet and exercise. I just work to educate pet owners on how to feed biologically appropriate meals to their dogs and cats. And this started really simply. Mm -hmm. I met a neighbor on the beach probably 15 years ago, didn't know her, but our dogs mm -hmm. played together. And all she said to me was, what are you feeding your dog? Mm -hmm. And I said, what? That one sentence from a perfect stranger changed the trajectory of my life. And from that point on, if she wasn't educating me on the BARF diet, I was educating myself. And then mm -hmm. I got certified in this. And from that point on, all I've done is try to share it with pet owners. Yeah, that's awesome. Like I told you before this interview and everything, I get a lot of questions about like the raw diet. And I ended up getting your book, which is great for someone who's a beginner wanting to learn information about this. And I'll leave that in the show notes below. But as far as like somebody that knows nothing, what is raw diet versus BARF diet? Is it all the same? It's the same. BARF stands for biologically appropriate raw food or bones and raw food. So as far as like a raw diet, because I see it where like, you know, dogs are eating literally just raw meats and things. Do you advocate a certain way? Should like people be cooking these meals or is a raw diet, say for like a small dog breed, like a Boston Terrier, would a cooked meal be better than a solid chunk of meat? Ideally... The raw diet is the most nutrient dense. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, I do tell pet owners, I encourage them to start with cooking meats at first and something as simple as ground beef, ground turkey, or ground duck, which or ground chicken, which is very mm -hmm. appropriate for small dogs like your own. We're not throwing hunks of meat at dogs. Okay. There are people who do that. They buy entire rabbits and throw rabbits, dead rabbits at their dogs and they tear them apart in the backyard. But mm -hmm. practical reasons, I tell people to start with some ground beef, ground chicken, ground turkey, cook it up medium rare, do that for a week just to get into the routine of feeding homemade. Mm -hmm. You want to start thinking about how can I make a balanced homemade diet? Mm -hmm. And then we can go to raw. As far as like Boston Terriers particularly, like they have, I mean, 
it's all based on diet, but bad gas. What could you recommend listeners, like something that they could do that would be natural as far as like a raw diet situation? So that's a great question. A basic starting place that is a pretty gentle meal to get started would be brown chicken, some canned pumpkin, and I like to cook up a grain. Okay. I just want to talk about grains, but let me finish this statement. Something that would be easy and easy to digest, brown chicken, okay. some canned pumpkin, and something like couscous or quinoa. Okay. Hardcore raw feeders do not agree with grains. However, I disagree with that because grains provide carbohydrates, which break down to glucose, and glucose supports the central nervous system. And we have an epidemic of anxious dogs in this country. Unless your dog has a legitimate and verified grain allergy, I see nothing wrong with feeding a little bit of grain in their meal. We are going back to how we fed them 100 years ago, which was table scraps and prey animals. Yeah. And well, I think it's also interesting. And it's like a side note, but with the grain free diet, I'd been feeding Bella a grain free diet. And now I'm sure you're aware of like with the FDA doing research into those type of dog foods that don't allow grain and just particularly like possibly linkage with heart failure and whatnot, trying to figure out which dog food to feed Bella next with implementing kind of the things that you recommend within your book. Well, as far as like behavior, how could their diet affect maybe a hyper Boston Terrier or just kind of calm them in general? This is a really great, great question. And I'm hoping to perhaps write a third book linking diet and behavior. Mm -hmm. When we eat animal protein, or let's say our dogs do, let's just take turkey, which has a bunch of amino acids like tryptophan. Tryptophan allows the brain to create serotonin and also dopamine, which offsets cortisol and noradrenaline. I say to pet owners, in the absence of animal protein, which supplies amino acids like tryptophan, is your dog's brain able to create serotonin? And we know serotonin, really, you know, it's just it's that feel-good hormone. Uh, it controls mood, it controls arousal and sensitivity to pain, sounds, and touch. The other thing I have to mention is that Dogs, this is very important for dog owners. Dogs do not have amylase in their saliva to break down the kibble, the dog food. They have a little amylase in their digestive tract. So, like, so amylase, is that just the, the enzyme? Just the enzyme? Okay. So amylase is an enzyme um, that we have, but mm -hmm. dogs do not have any amylase in their saliva, nor do cats. So therefore, their digestion is not even starting in the mouth. It doesn't start until it's in the stomach. My theory is dogs are walking around starving all day long because they can't even break down the food they're eating, which is why a dog on commercial pet food, the stool is very voluminous. As soon as you put the dog on a homemade diet, you get about a third of the stool that you normally would get on a commercial diet. Hmm, that is interesting, just because they're breaking down, getting more nutrients from it. They cannot break down the kibble in their mouth. It doesn't start to be broken down. So I ask people, if your dog is chewing all the furniture and walking around all the time anxious, I talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, basically. The first need, food and shelter, right? right. The first need is food and shelter. If we're not even meeting our dog's food needs and nutrition, how can we expect them to be calm and well-behaved? Right. It, why we have an epidemic of anxious dogs in the country because they're walking around starving all day long. Hmm. And I mean, that makes total sense to me. Like Bella had really bad separation anxiety and I could see where that would be linked I mean, to her food as well. I mean, just like, you know, if you give a kid a bunch of bad nutrition, it's not going <laughs> to behave well. Now that I have toddlers, I know too much about that. When your child starts to get hungry, what happens? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get angry. <laughs> Extend that to four or five hours later and the child's still hungry. And then eight or nine, what do you have on your hands? A child that's unraveling. This is just an offside question as far as like kibble. You kind of like whenever you see breakfast cereals, right? Where it's like, oh, Cheerios, a wholesome part. And it's supposed to be a part of the breakfast. Was kibble supposed to be a part of the dog's diet? Like whenever it first came out or is it something that is kind of progress to no the history of commercial pet food is very interesting and i won't go through it maybe on another segment okay. but it started with a simple entrepreneur on a ship uh in the late eight, in the late 1800s traveling with his dog he created a biscuit for his dog because he figured the ship biscuits weren't as good fast forward to 1957 purina mm -hmm. saw the opening to create kibble for dogs 
-hmm. We have been using canned horse meat. Kennel racing got on the bandwagon early, years earlier, mm -hmm. but the tip became too expensive. Our horse surplus dried up and Purina, who is a maker of feed for farm animals, mm -hmm. saw the opportunity to bring out kibble as a quick and easy way for Americans to feed their pets. That's how it happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Simple. The rest is history. I mean, that makes sense, you know, money motivated. Hey, I hope you're getting value out of this interview. If you are, definitely consider subscribing to this YouTube channel just so you can get the latest from Boston Terrier Society. Back to the show. As far as, you know, just somebody who wants to get started, your book's a great starting point. But if you're wanting to get started on just introducing this type of whether or not it's homemade as far as home cooked or even raw, for instance, what should somebody do? Like first step. I try to encourage um, pet owners to not overcomplicate things, right? Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing to think about is figuring out a meal prep and shopping schedule that also works with their own meal prep and shopping schedule. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. I do a lot of shopping, you know, at Trader Joe's and Stop and Shop. Mm -hmm. So when I'm there, I buy all the canned fish I'm going to feed the dogs. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. I eat a lot of pasta. I always make a little extra for the dogs. Really easy, orzo. Mm -hmm. I add that to their meals. When you go shopping, just pick up the things you need for your dog while you're shopping for yourself. You're not making extra trips. It's almost routine. I order food from an organic farmer in Pennsylvania. I order their eggs. Mm -hmm. I hard boil a dozen eggs every week for my dogs. So it's just part of what I do for myself. My second tip would be prepare in advance. You're not cooking every day. Mm -hmm. I just mentioned the dozen eggs. Once a week, I will boil a dozen eggs. I do them soft boiled. I think they like them better that yeah. way. But That's one, how day, like <laughs> one day a week, mm -hmm. I boil a dozen eggs. They cool, they go in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Then I'll cook um, orzo, put that in the refrigerator. And I use that throughout the week. I keep everything separate. When you prepare your fruit and vegetables, pick one fruit or one vegetable and puree enough for three or four days based on how many pets you have. I know how soon I'll go through some pureed apples. Preparing in advance means that you have enough for three or four days and you're not constantly scrambling. A nice way to store frozen fruit, I buy these sil silicone ice cube trays. These are actually paw prints. Okay. Oh, nice. It's fun. I puree um, some frozen organic berries. I pour it into that tray, put it in the freezer. I have three of those trays. That's 30 servings of, of fruit I have in the freezer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think that's a good idea. Because, I mean, the first thing I think of whenever I thought like home cooked meals, like, oh my, like cooking for a family of four and then also cooking a meal for Bella. <laughs> but I like the idea of just integrating it to the whole family's meal plan pretty much. You're going to boil some sweet potatoes for yourself and the family. You put some sweet potatoes aside for your dog. It's that simple. Another thing that I like to talk about is buying in bulk. I can easily order an entire case of canned organic canned pumpkin mm -hmm. off of Amazon whenever I need canned pumpkin. I always have canned pumpkin in my cabinets. Mm -hmm. Incorporate the meal prep and shopping schedule with your meal prep and shopping schedule. Prepare in advance and buy in bulk. That will simplify everything and make it not only much more doable, but enjoyable. As far as like uh, making sure your dog's getting the proper nutrition, you know, based on size and everything, are there any like tools that you use for this? No, I do have ratios of how much of each food group, mm -hmm. but in terms of proper nutrition, mm -hmm. I encourage pet owners to rotate, rotate the proteins, do chicken, do turkey, do duck, do beef. Whatever you have at your, you know, it's, it's also regional. As long as you rotate fruits and vegetables and the meats, you will create a balanced meal. It doesn't have to be perfectly balanced every day. Mm -hmm. Our dogs did not eat like that in the wild. Right. And I think about just myself, you know, how they're like, I wouldn't be measuring out. I mean, some people do as far as exactly how much protein, carbohydrates, et cetera, that they're eating. What's more important to me is that the bulk of their diet is animal protein. You know, we're replicate all of our dogs. All of them came from Eurasian gray wolf, all of them. And depending on what set of archaeological bones you look at, it was as far back as 40,000 years ago up to 10,000 years ago. Regardless of which set of bones you want to look at, 
our dogs became a distinct species from the Eurasian gray wolf tens of thousands of years ago, and all they ate was t- table scraps and prey animals. That's a long time, eating table scraps and prey animals, and they've done pretty well, if you ask me. <laughs> As, yeah, exactly. I'm thinking like in my head, calorie count. Is there a proportion sizes as far as, I mean, how, how would you do that, go about that? The serving size chart in my book, believe it or not, was the most difficult part of that book. I had to look at <laughs> uh-huh. different bags of dog food, which I don't have. I had to really compare and find a standard serving size for different dog weights. Mm-hmm. And there is really standards out there, believe it or not. What I tell people is don't get overly concerned with calories. Look at your dog's body. If It's like us. If we start to get a little too big, we say, wait a second, we're eating too much. If they're getting a little too thin, you've got to add food. Dogs should have a nice little taper at the waist. Mm-hmm. So I just tell pet owners, look at your dog and see what's happening with his body. If he's really hungry and walking around and still bothering you after mealtime, he needs a little bit more food. Okay. I, and I love that approach just because it's not you doing anything extra. Like, so Bella, I swear she has dementia. I like the routine in the morning is I take her out and then I bring her in and I feed her. And then in the evening when I take her out, I mean, I take her out more times than that, but in the evening, I also take her out and feed her afterwards. But now she's at the point where every time I take her out, she wants to eat. And then just to appease her, I've given in, you know, just a little bit of extra. But today, whenever I went to pick her up, I'm like, wow, she's feeling pretty stuffy. (laughs) dog, right? (laughs) Yeah. But so I like the approach of just, you know, you just feeling your dog and knowing your dog rather than putting it on the scale or trying to measure out like a chemist exactly what. It's not not practical. And I think I think the great success of my book is that it's incredibly practical while still being balanced, biologically appropriate meals. I've been doing this for a long time. I've had a lot of pets. I rescued a lot of cats and dogs and they all thrive. And I mean that there's, I am very rarely with a sick animal. They all get along. The cats are not meals on wheels for the dogs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just tell people, you know, when I look at what I've done and I don't tell people to do anything I don't do for my dogs and cats. Okay. I like that. As far as prepackaged foods, you know, you see these, I mean, in my city, I see just trucks all the time, you know, places popping up where they do home cooked meals. What do you think about those like Nom Nom and Farmer's Dog? I actually love them because they're fueling sales of my book. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> sure. When people want to see how they can do it themselves. Right. I, God bless them. I think they're great services. I mm-hmm. think that if you don't have the time, this is a great, great option. Mm-hmm. And let's say you started and you get thinking, well, so becoming a little cost prohibitive, maybe mm-hmm. you adopt another dog or two. You can certainly still have these services and also create your own meals. Once in a while, maybe a week here or a week there, you create your own meals and do a little combination of both. That's fine. On your website and everything, I know you do consultations for people that maybe want to start this. Like, can you walk me through what those consultations look like? Um, in case somebody's watching this and they're like, I would like to do this, but I just want a little more assistance. I have two different services at my website. Some people just prefer to do a phone consultation. I have mm-hmm. a 30 and 60 minute phone consultation. Some people want an actual transition diet drawn up. The transition diet is a four week program that is specifically written for your dog. Approach is that I will send client questionnaire. You will fill out all the pertinent information. Once I get it back, it takes me about a solid two weeks to create the diet. Over the four weeks, we gradually pull out the commercial pet food. And by the end of the four weeks, you have a dog on a raw diet. I do tell people, however, which I ask them in the questionnaire, if they're not interested in raw, the four weeks ends in cooked diet. But the four week program is basically teaching the pet owner every combination, every single thing that they can put together Mm -hmm. for their dog. And I break each week down in three days and four days. For example, a pet owner will do the same meals, breakfast and dinner for the first three days. And then the rest of the week, it switches. And then we have week number two. And I start to add in organ meat later on. And if it's a big dog where they can, you know, chew bone, by week three, I'll add some raw bones. And then I laminate that since I know it's going to be in the kitchen and I mail that program to the client. And then we have a phone call and we review the entire program. And then I'm of course still available down the road. Should they need further assistance or should we need to tweak it? No, that sounds great. Well, I guess, you know, somebody's watching this video and everything. 
any words of advice or tips that you'd give to somebody who's wanting to start out on basically this journey of feeding, you know, raw food to their Boston Terrier or any dog in general? I would highly encourage trying it for two weeks. You will not believe how happy your pet will be at feeding time. My dogs jump. They are, you hear them whimpering. <laughs> if you see the reaction of your pet to home cooked meals, mm-hmm. it will be enough for you to say, this is a, a road I need to travel down. And it doesn't have to start as this big commitment. Just get to it for two weeks and try it. And if, if it doesn't work, then you have the option to say, listen, I can't do this. But to see how your dog's health changes, the fur always changes. Mm-hmm. The fur is always softer. The allergies, the skin issues always, if not completely eliminated, are greatly diminished. And they're calm. I've got five dogs in this house and six cats, and you'd never know it. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's, there's my Bella over there. <laughs> <laughs> you would not regret it. You will not regret putting your pet on a homemade diet. As far as someone wanting to reach out and contact you, what is the best way to do that? So the best way is to email me at my website, which is bowmeowraw.com. Dot com. Okay. And I'll put that in the show notes below as well as some other contact information for you. Awesome. Well, Christine, thank you so much for coming on and sharing that information. I think it's going to help a lot of people. Thank you for having me, Donald. And thank you for supporting what is my life's mission to really help pet owners and provide the best possible life for their dogs and cats. You're thank you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this interview. Once again, if you want to connect with Christine, her information is going to be in the show notes. She does offer one-on-one coaching. So if you want to transition your Boston Terrier into a raw food diet and actually have somebody help you along the way, that's going to be in the show notes as well as her book and her website if you want to learn more about it. Question of the day, what raw food diet questions do you have? Put them in the comments below because I'm curious to see what you guys come up with. And I can try to have somebody else come on or Christine to answer those specific questions for you. And once again, I am creating a template on how to start your Boston Terrier on a raw food diet. If you want to get that information once it's released, go in the show notes to go ahead and subscribe so I can email it out to you. If you want to learn more about Boston Terriers, definitely check out this video that I created, 20 Reasons Why They're the Best Dog Breed in America, or you can check out one of my latest videos here. And as always, until next time, life is better with a Boston.